when I swim, I feel like I'm free. It's like, it's only me in the water. And then now, and it's like, you know, you can think about all these different things while you're swimming. And sometimes you get lost in your thoughts. But since I've started swimming, you know, I've started at like five laps, 10 laps, 15, 20, 25, all the way up to 100 laps. And just, it's just me in the pool. And then uh, now it's just me and God when I'm, when I'm in the pool. It's awesome. Everything that happened leading up to uh, the attack with the IED was uh, probably the most profound thing that I have ever experienced in my life. Um, it took me quite a few years just to put it, piece it all back together because there's a whole set of events that, that happened. And so um, on June 30th, I got into a near ambush. And a near ambush is when the enemy will filter you into this area and they will wait until you hit a certain spot and as soon as you hit that certain spot, they'll detonate like a mass casualty weapon system, like a bomb. And uh, then, the, then they'll have concentrated fire directly onto your position. And uh, as soon as we got, got through the attack, you know, I was checking all my guys to make sure that they weren't killed or wounded. Now, uh, with, with an attack like that, your adrenaline's pumping so hard, so you don't even realize if you're shot or wounded. And as I'm running through and uh, after the battle, we're checking these guys to make sure they're not bleeding. No one's hurt, nobody's injured. And so um, as I'm checking my guys, one of the team leaders, he's walking around checking his guys, he steps on an IED. It does not blow up. And so we, we scan it with our minesweeper and we're like, okay, there's a bomb there. We blew it up in place and then we rolled out. As soon as we got back to base, the other platoon replaced us to go out into the area. As soon as they got out there, Boom, they lost two guys. One guy died and the other guy became a triple amputee. And um, it, it really sucked. It was, it, was, it was crazy. We were combat ineffective at this point. At this point in time in the deployment, they're like, no more patrols. We cannot patrol anymore because if we lose any more guys, we're not gonna be able to um, man the guard positions. And this is four months into the deployment and we've already sustained this amount of casualties. So you know it's like extremely hostile area. So, uh, the next day, this was on um, July 1st, uh, we got attacked on the base. And when we got attacked on the base, um, everyone just mounted up on the little wall. And um, when everyone's on the wall, everyone's just shooting off these guns in different directions, just, just shooting, just to try to get the, heads, the enemy's heads down. I waited for this bad guy to pop out and I let him have it. I, mo I mowed him down and as soon as I got him, this like, presence came right at me and um, you know for a long time I was in denial of what what really happened but it was like this this thought just popped in my head and I just felt this presence and it was like you live by the sword you die by the sword and I was like what the heck is going on like why am I thinking about this the next day my command is like yo we're not patrolling anymore we lost so many guys but pain where you uh, went out there and shot that guy you got to go out there tomorrow and as soon as I walked out there I felt that presence come right back at me and it was like, it was like, get ready. I'm like, what the heck? And then boom, I got blown up. I went flying back, like, uh, I went up like 10 feet and back 10 feet. I stepped on a 30 pound bomb. There was just a big yellow and uh, red and orange flash. It was like a giant firecracker just freaking explode right in my face. When I was on the ground, I was looking at it. I'm like, oh shoot, man. I was like, this is not right at all. I can't believe this is happening. And I could see right through my arm. I could see through the bone and I could see all the charred flesh. It looked like a chicken wing. You take a bite out of a chicken wing and you just see the bone and you know that all that meat's gone. That's exactly what it looked like. And then I looked at my other hand. I was like, okay, this is not that bad. I just had some holes. And I started looking at my legs and my legs were just all ripped open. And it's not like they were gone. Like they were gone below my knees. And um, it's not like a clean cut. It was like mangled flesh, just stuff ripped all, all over the place. And uh, I could see my shin bone, I could see my, my kneecap, and uh, it was just smoking, like just smoke dissipated off. It was stained red blood. I had eight tourniquets on. That I had two on my left arm, two on my right arm, two on my left leg, two on my right leg. And they were tightening them down. And that's when I first started feeling pain. It was like, as soon as they started cranking this thing down, it felt like the worst pain possible. First day I gone swimming after my attack was 
it took a lot of courage. My biggest challenge to overcome was suicide. I was suicidal for a while. When I started swimming again, um, this is when I, I got off my medications and I was like, I gotta do this because of my leadership mentality. I gotta do this so I can be the best example for my soldiers and they, want, they don't wanna see me fail. And I can't show them that I'm a failure. It's like, I guess you could say it's pride. So I'm swimming every day and um, I was like, I wanna die. I was like, I, I don't wanna do this. I was like, I, I, but I can't, I cannot fail my soldier, so how can I do this? I was like, I know I can probably self-induce a heart attack. So I, I was like, I'm taking Adderall, and it was at the point where I'm like, okay, my heart's gonna explode, and I could feel it going, da -da 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 but it wouldn't, it'd feel like, okay, here it comes, here it comes, but then it would just go away. And I'm like, God, why the hell can't you just kill me? I'm like, I don't wanna live here, I wanna die. Kill me, kill me, kill me, kill me. And then all of a sudden, boom, it was gone. It just disappeared. My, my, my suicidal tendency just evaporated. I was getting in shape, I was losing a lot of weight, my cardiovascular ability was like skyrocketing, and um, I was like in the greatest mood. I was like, man, I'm doing freaking awesome, because everyone was like motivating me, but I was like trying to kill myself at the same time, but then it just disappeared. It just totally went away completely. My road recovery started the first day I started swimming in the pool. When the doctors, they were like, if you really want to recover, you have to do mind, body and spirit. The first year of my recovery started in the pool and it was starting the body. And I had to work the body and then the mind came later because I had to work through the whole depression and suicide. And you know, the way how I did it, I just kept on, I just had at it. I just kept on going with the working out. And then it, it really, really cured my mind. But I was arguing with God the whole time and then it just, everything went away. And uh, dude, it's been the most amazing, fulfilling journey that I, could not possibly imagine. My name is Timothy Payne, and uh, I started 11 years in the United States Army. I was an airborne infantry soldier. I was a ranger candidate, special forces candidate, times two, civil affairs candidate, and I was a recruiter in the for uh, for Syracuse Recruiting Battalion.